Ashley Babbitt, I believe, was murdered on January 6th. She was murdered. You saw the clip I did. I saw that she was unarmed. I saw that no warning was offered, no verbal command to get back. She was shot and killed, and nobody seems to care. I do. Also, January 6th, let's stay on that for a moment. January 6th of uh, this year is being exploited, being exaggerated and sensationalized by the left to score political points and to hurt those of us who support Donald Trump. Also, Election Day, November 3rd, 2020. I understand that Joe Biden is the president right now. He was sworn in on the 20th. But good people can still have concerns about the fairness of that election. Was it totally fair? I don't think we know enough. I think there's a lot more to be learned. Quit calling it the big lie. This was a very unusual election, and it's perfectly fine for us to ask questions and get answers. So January 6th of this year, the riot on Capitol Hill. This has been exaggerated, hyped, and sensationalized, I believe, by the left, so they can achieve even more political power and tarnish those who oppose them. That said, there were some bad things that happened that day, and I would like to know more. But this commission they're talking about may not be a fair one at all. Let's bring in our panel. We have Mark Meadows with us, former member of Congress, former White House chief of staff to Donald Trump. Welcome, sir. And also Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, who has been seeking critical information in this case and meeting a lot of resistance. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Mark, first to you. What is the problem with the commission that they're talking about right now? It seems like it's not an earnest effort to find out everything we need to know. Well, it's all about political uh, theater. I mean, Tom, Tom, I'm sure will back me up on this, but what we see is these uh, made-for-TV uh, quote commissions and hearings that go on. They're they're not really about finding the truth, and the and the truth of the matter is, they need to ask themselves some very tough questions, like why didn't Nancy Pelosi reach out? Uh, to my to my knowledge, she never reached out to the the Trump White House. But listen, this is all about, this is the only thing Democrats have. They, they uh, have open borders. We have no jobs. We have uh, no peace in the Middle East. And so this is the only issue that they can grab onto. So this is all about political theater, not about getting to the truth. Well, Tom, I know you're seeking information, but before we get to that, uh, the 9-11 Commission, I actually thought that did a pretty good job. You know, it was bipartisan. They found out a lot of things that we want to know. When I look at this legislation authorizing the commission, they're already right off the bat talking about domestic terrorism. And I'm told that this will specifically preclude us from finding out about what happened to Ashley Babbitt, why it happened, how it happened. Do you have a problem with this legislation? Yeah. I, if it were political theater, I, you know, that's, that's what happens on Capitol Hill, political theater. That's, you know, you have investigations or committee hearings. We all know what that's about. The concern is that, uh, especially under Nancy Pelosi, this Congress will weaponize its powers further to target its political opposition under the guise of investigating what's plainly happening here, which was a riot among certain people. We have the video of it happening. They want to go beyond that in the sense of trying to tie the president's political opposition or people who he thinks are his political opposition and harass them with subpoenas and such. Remember, it was this House of Representatives that we're fighting now over a subpoena they issued secretly for the phone records of the president's lawyer without court authorization, and they're saying they have the power to do that. I, I oppose this because it is a clear and present danger to our constitutional liberties. They haven't used this for political gain. They've used this to abuse power and our civil liberties, and this commission, in my view, given the background of the folks behind this is part of that game. Well, it's too bad well, because great. there are some they, valid they questions. They Mark, have, if you don't mind, yeah. I want to take us through yeah. a couple of things that I need answered. Uh, and I think we as Americans need answered. Who is this cop who seemed to be letting people in? We saw numerous videos like this. This officer is encouraging, directing people onto the steps of the Capitol. We saw it also closer to the Capitol, uh, the barricades being dismantled and people encouraged to come through right here in the next clip. And then later, you actually see people walking right by Capitol Hill police 
who are doing nothing to uh, stand in their way or even encourage them to turn around. It's just kind of welcome to the Capitol. Come on in. These things have not been adequately addressed, Mark, as far as I can tell. Well, they haven't been adequately addressed, but I, I can tell you, uh, Tom's exactly right. Not only is this hearing and this commission not set up in a way to get to the truth, but the conclusion's already been drafted. Let's, let's face it, uh, Nancy Pelosi, her progressive leftist Democrat colleagues have already uh, written the narrative. They've written the conclusion. They're looking for some legitimate way to be able to continue this on without answering the very questions that you were talking about. You know, who were the officers that were involved in that and and ultimately when we when we look at this whole narrative they only have January 6 that's mm -hmm. all they've got because they have no ideas and uh, and at the end of the day I don't see it being meaningful I served on the oversight committee as Tom and and you both know and and I can tell you that most of what they will do is just make four or five minute speeches for television in hopes of continuing a, a false narrative mm -hmm. you mentioned both political theater Here's Congressman Tim Ryan, Democrat of Ohio, who ran for president, believe it or not, in the last cycle. Uh, <laughs> political theater. Here it is. I want to thank the gentleman from New York and the other Republicans who are supporting this and thank them for their bipartisanship. To the other 90 percent of our friends on the other side of the aisle, holy cow, incoherence. No idea what you're talking about. We have people scaling the Capitol, hitting the Capitol Police with lead pipes across the head, and we can't get bipartisanship. What else has to happen in this country? Cops. This is a slap in the face to every rank-and-file cop in the United States. We need two political parties in this country that are both living in reality, and you ain't one of them. You know, it's totally ridiculous. Um, and by the way, law enforcement, <laughs> Officer Sicknick, they lied about him. He was a hero the day he volunteered uh, for that job. But they lied about him. He was not killed by Trump supporters. He had a medical episode, and they have still not come clean. We, uh, I only have a few seconds left. Final thoughts, uh, Tom, if you don't mind. Heal thyself, physician. We're asking for information about what went on. We've had to go to federal court. The Capitol Hill police is covering up what went on. The, the lack of disclosure and secrecy can be addressed immediately. But of course, they don't want to do that because they don't want to focus on themselves. They want to focus on citizens. This is a dangerous time we're living in. Tom Fitton, we're glad you're on the case. And Mark Meadows, you too. We appreciate it so much. To be continued, and we'll be right back. January 6th was not an insurrection, not an insurrection. No matter how much they hype this, exaggerate it, sensationalize it, lie about it, it was not an insurrection. They are doing all those things to achieve even more political power. But the lies and the distortions, not fair to anyone. What they're trying to do really is cancel Trump supporters or at least tarnish us for possibly having, I don't know, did we have something to do with this? Of course not. This was a riot. It was a bad day. But this, what they say about it, is not true. This was the most violent and disruptive uh, assault on the Capitol, breaching of the Capitol, since the War of 1812. The U.S. Capitol suffered its worst security breach since the War of 1812. Nobody's attacked Congress since 1812. It was the worst attack on the Capitol since the War of 1812. Wow all speaking from the same Talking Points memo and all speaking uh, incorrectly about our history. Now, the War of 1812 was a big deal, and it was very, very bad. The Brits basically burned down the entire city. But a lot of bad things have happened since inside the Capitol. In 1998, two Capitol Hill police officers were shot and killed, Detective Gibson and Officer Chestnut. They were shot and killed by an anti-government lunatic who got inside the Capitol and went on a shooting spree. Hmm? That was very, very bad. What do you think the families of those officers think and feel when they say uh, <laughs> January 6th was worse than that? Hmm? It wasn't. It wasn't. How about 1983, when a bomb went off outside of the Senate? That was a very, very big deal. No one was injured, but it shut down business. In 1954, a gunman got inside the House of Representatives and actually shot five members of Congress.
It's a Puerto Rican nationalist, and this was a very, very big deal. Shot from inside the House, from the gallery up there. Five members of Congress were shot. Uh, closer to the White House in 1950, if they call this a, an attack on democracy, there was an assassination attempt at Blair House right across the street from the White House. President Truman was staying there temporarily while they were renovating the White House. A Secret Service agent was killed and several were wounded. Also in 1915, a big stick of dynamite went off inside the Capitol building, inside the Capitol building, right outside the United States Senate. This was big bad stuff that has happened and a lot of it worse than what happened on January 6th. And keep in mind, on January 6th, Capitol really wasn't out of commission. They had to clean it up, but a few hours later, it was back to business, back to the electoral count. A lot of folks wanted to see a fuller debate, but that did not happen. All right, so should we have a commission? A commission, a real commission to find out what happened on January 6th? I actually think a real one would be great, but apparently the one they're considering, not so great, not so great. Uh, there are certain things they will omit, certain things they will look at. It seems designed to embarrass Republicans and not get the real answers that we need. Questions like this, what happened with those barricades? Why were some officers allowing protesters onto the steps of Capitol Hill? Have you seen this? No one has explained what this was all about. And this happened all over Capitol Hill that day. You'll see in another portion here, these barricades being removed by police officers so these people can get inside the Capitol building. And then there were others, Capitol Hill police officers, just standing by, just welcome to the Capitol. What was all of this about? What was all of this about? Also, and you've seen this by now, the Horns guy and others like him just allowed into the Senate. They were just allowed into the Senate. At one point, that Capitol Hill police officer, you know, is basically saying, all right, guys, time's up. Do you mind leaving? Any chance I could get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We will. I've been making sure they ain't disrespecting the place. Okay, just want to let you guys know, this is like the <laughs> sacredest place. Uh -huh. So why was that happening on the Senate side? Meanwhile, over on the House side, anybody who got within 10 feet of the House chamber was shot and killed. That's happening on the House side. You saw what was happening in the Senate side. Makes no sense. No warning. Ashley Babbitt was shot and killed, and nobody seems to care. And for what I'm told about this commission, it will specifically not ask questions about this matter. It's like having the 9-11 Commission and not investigating the plane crashes of September 11, 2001, the hijacked planes. It's ridiculous. We need and deserve answers. And I want some questions asked of the media, too. Um, what was their role in all of this? And, you know, I find it still astounding that in the aftermath of January 6th, the media didn't mention that a Trump supporter was shot and killed, an unarmed Trump supporter. There is Savannah Guthrie the next morning in front of the Capitol, in that building, right behind her. That's where Ashley Babbitt was possibly murdered. We don't have the full story yet. We need answers. But most of all, you know who needs to be questioned? This one. I am calling for the resignation of the Capitol, the chief of the Capitol Police, Mr. Sund, and I have received a uh, notice from Mr. Irving that he is, will be submitting his resignation. What did she know? When did she know it? What was her role in all of this? I don't think she should have any position right now in establ establishing how this is all going to be investigated. That's a massive, massive conflict of interest. One more thing, I am sick of the lies told about this day, especially about Officer Sicknick, Brian Sicknick. Now, he's a hero in my book, the day he volunteered to be a Capitol Hill police officer. But there's something very, very wrong about all of this. We were told for weeks that he was, actually months, that he was killed by Trump supporters with a fire extinguisher. That is not true. But why haven't we been told the entire story? And the Capitol Police, quite frankly, have been extremely evasive in all of this. And this funeral, almost a month later, 
held, I'm sorry, but it struck me as political theater. It did. And meanwhile, do you think this guy is really, really seeking the truth as he said he was on Inauguration Day? There is truth and there are lies. Lies told for power and for profit. And each of us has a duty and a responsibility as citizens, as Americans, and especially as leaders, leaders who have pledged to honor our Constitution and protect our nation, to defend the truth and defeat the lies. The first part of that, I think he was spot on, and he revealed himself again. Lies told for power and profit. Absolutely, Joe. We'll be right back. Look, here's the reality. There are Americans who, unfortunately, believe in political power through force. Some examples, Antifa, the radical BLM cop killer in Dallas, and yes, a group of thugs who attacked the police at the Capitol on January 6th. These people brought great dishonor to the America First cause. But this isn't an effort to understand or to deter political violence. This commission, this sham tribunal, is directed only at MAGA believers. You know, this is impeachment 3.0. This is going after President Trump again. Uh, it, it makes no sense how it's structured. We should be honest about what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. President Trump called for peaceful protest. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. But some of his supporters then acted criminally and they should be prosecuted fully. Our America First movement is about backing the blue and respecting law and order. But the riot was not, by any stretch, an insurrection. The government was not threatened. The military complex was not imperiled. Unarmed morons in furry hats running around hallways with selfie sticks is not a real rebellion. In fact, there is no evidence that there were any firearms in that building, except for the armed police, including the one who shot and killed MAGA supporter Ashley Babbitt. The only person killed on that really unfortunate day was a deplorable Ashley Babbitt. We should remember her name, in part because we still do not know another name, the name of her shooter. But you know, the truth just doesn't matter to the left. Pelosi, Schumer, and the Biden administration, they are hell-bent on forcing a narrative down our throats, one based on conjecture, like the myth that Officer Sicknick was killed by the crowd. The riot on January 6th, here's the truth, it was quickly and thankfully dispersed because of the brave actions from law enforcement and because President Trump issued a strong video telling everyone to stop it, to knock it off, and to go home. But instead, the Republican leaders that we wanted elected, they want to validate this Democrat myth-making and even endorse it by appointing a political inquisition board, and that's what it is. But they not only miss the mark on the policy side, but also on the politics, too. Just look at their districts. Trump won 30 of those 35 districts. Let's take a couple of examples. Rodney Davis of Illinois, he cruised to victory in 2020 by nine points in a district that hasn't elected a Democrat representative since the 1800s. Or take Tony Gonzalez of Ohio. His district is plus 10 Republican, and his vote for Nancy's tribunal was just the icing on the cake because he also voted for the second sham impeachment of President Trump. That's right, 10 out of these 35 reps. They earned that dubious distinction. I call them the terrible 10. It's an even more detestable subset of the broader gang of 35, all of them all 35, but particularly these 10, they need to lose and to lose in primaries. Now, regarding those odds of the primaries and getting an America First Congress elected, let's go to a chalk talk. So these are the infamous terrible 10 who voted for both the impeachment of President Trump as well as this January 6th commission. Now, I'm putting two of them aside because they are in Dem-leaning districts, but the others, the others, they are in 
heavily Republican leaning districts. Cheney plus 26, Rice plus 11, Newhouse plus 13. Taken together, these eight in total, their districts average 10.6% Republican lean, according to the Cook Political Report. Why is that important? Because if we beat them in the primary, it, we're not at risk of sacrificing the seat just because we removed an incumbent. So when we beat them in the primary with America First Republican candidates, they will then also keep the seat in Republican hands. And Jen, you know, I have to tell you that today on social media uh, and also just calls and emails with a lot of folks, the America First movement, the activists, they are irate about these three dozen roughly Republicans. As they absolutely should be, Steve. And just what I can't get over is the fact that obviously what's happening with these Republicans, but just the fact that there's so much focus on January 6th, but not much talk about what happened last year in terms of our cities burning and people destroying right. them. That's what gets me fired up. Of course. And, and look, again, political violence, any kind of violence, particularly against police, is always wrong. But in terms of a scale of severity, what happened last summer is massively more important for our country than what happened on January 6th. Now, Indeed. to talk more about this disappointing gang of GOP establishmentarians, we're joined by Ned Ryan. He is the founder and CEO of American Majority. So, Ned, I want to get your thoughts, number one, on this group uh, that I'm referring to as the Eunuch Caucus. I want to get your thoughts on this group, but also the thoughts on the strategy to beat them? Well, first of all, you're right, uh, Steve, that they are the unit caucus. I call them useful idiots of the left today, that they bought into the lie, the big lie that January 6th was some armed insurrection. Uh, really what it is, Steve, and I think people should be aware, it's, it's political theater uh, being used to create a political weapon to punish your political opponents and enemies. And I really think that, that what this is, is, again, it's a replay of the Russian collusion conspiracy being used to spin up the Mueller investigation to use as a weapon uh, against Donald Trump, except for this time, uh, Steve, it's being used to target really 75 million uh, American voters who voted for Trump. But I really like your chalk talk. I mean, you make a great point. 30 of the 35 that voted for this ridiculous, idiotic commission are from R plus districts. Of those 30, 25 are from R plus five, as you pointed out. If you're in a plus five R district, the odds are really good that in a general election, you'll hold that seat. Therefore, they should be targets for primary challenges because they clearly haven't gotten the memo, Steve, that the Republican Party is America first. When you have a President Trump with 95% approval rating in the Republican Party, it should be something of a clue to these people where the base is at, and yet they refuse to accept reality, Steve. I hope reality slaps them in the face during the primary season of 2022. Now, you know, this is what really gets to me is, you know, you take a look at last year, Axios reporting from May 6th to June 8th of 2020, what the Democrats called the summer of love, which was clearly not one to two billion dollars in damages in our cities that were already dealing with so much in, in relation to the coronavirus and these shutdowns, uh, all the, these businesses burned, um, you know, so much destruction over 100 days of violence in cities like Portland, Oregon. And meanwhile, you have 440 people charged with the events on January and I hear very little about anybody getting charged in relation to what happened across our cities last year. I, I mean, Jen, this is a troubling part to what's going on in this country today. We have a bifurcated legal system in which if you have the right political connections, uh, you get away with literally anything, burning down American cities. Uh, there were dozens of people that were killed in the riots of 2020. But if you have the right political leanings or are useful to a certain political party, you get a pass. If you have the wrong political connections, there are literally dozens of people being held in solitary confinement in D.C., having not been charged, still waiting trial, because they happen to be America First supporters. And I think this, is, right. this should be troubling for anybody on the right or the left, that we have this bifurcated system that is being used as a weapon against people, not equal, equally applied, but being used as a right. weapon because of political uh, differences. That's a great point, Ed. And some of those people who are being held are literally only being held for trespassing. And now, look, I'm not trying to excuse trespassing, but it's not the kind of crime for which you should be imprisoned or in jail until your trial. Ned, I want to ask you, though, too, about the larger mentality here, because I think this vote is perhaps emblematic of the traditional Republican approach, which is that, frankly, we're polite losers. Get elected to Washington, right. D.C., go along, get along. Uh, do we need to come to terms with the fact that the left is playing for keeps here, uh, and we can't fight in gentlemanly fashion when they are sharpening a political shiv for us right now with full control of Washington, D.C. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I mean, the, the amazing thing, Steve, that's really on display here is that the Democrats, the left, they know how to use political power when they have it, whereas Republicans, 
you know, we send careers. They're, they're a bunch of religious zealots. Let, let's be blunt. They're religious zealots. We're, we're careerists, and we want to trim around the edges, and we want to be polite. They're going for the win. And my hope is that the Republican Party moving forward is more and more America first. People win in Congress and the House and the Senate and at the state legislative level that we actually know what to do with political power when we have it to advance mm. our agenda and, and go to the mass to actually implement what we believe is a very beneficial vision for this country. But in some ways, Steve, I, I oddly admire the left because they actually know what to do with political power. Now, I want to get your reaction to what Rep Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, had to say regarding the commission. Let's take a listen to that. You see, what's going to happen with the January 6th commission is the media is going to use this to smear Trump supporters and President Trump for the next few years and cover up the damage, the real damage that's happening to, this, to the people of this country, which is tearing down our economy, ripping our borders wide open, and hurting this country. Ned, there are a number of Biden, uh, you know, related crises right now. Your thoughts on this potentially uh, being a means of distraction? Of course it is. It's being used as a distraction so people aren't thinking about the 4.3% inflation, the terrible job numbers that we've had this year, the explosion on the border where we're literally having 10 times as many people come across the border with Biden in the White House as we had with Trump at this time last year. Uh, this is a useful distraction, and it's also, again, being used to intimidate and silence people. But I think it's going to backfire on them. I don't think it's going to be as effective as they think it is. And, in fact, in some ways, I think it's going to spur the America First base on in the primaries and in the general. And I would also add this, too, for the listeners, that the redistricting process, if we can win some of these primaries, I think we've got a really good shot at taking the House back in the fall. But we better give people a reason to fight, and it's for America First candidates. Well, Ned Ryan, we appreciate you being on with us tonight. Thanks, guys. I wanted to talk about uh, the House today approving this measure, creating an independent commission to investigate the January 6th Capitol attack. Of course, the story that the Democrats never, ever want to let go of. The bill passing 252 to 175. 35 Republicans voting for this commission. Names like Cheney, names like Kinzinger. I want to get your uh, quick thoughts on that. Well, it depends. If it's a fair commission, if it looks into objectively and fairly all the facts, I don't see any real problem with it. It doesn't have the power to prosecute. It simply has the power to reveal and disclose information uh, as long as it's handled fairly. I have no confidence, however, that uh, a partisan vote, uh, even though there was some, obviously, Republicans who voted for it, right. will assure that the, the investigation or the commission will operate uh, fairly. Look, I think in America, when a president is defeated, that should be the end of the matter. This is not a banana republic in South America where you go after the defeated candidate. That happens all over South America and in parts of the world. It's never before happened in the United States. I mean, even with President Nixon, once he resigned, once his term was over, they didn't go after him. They issued a pardon because they wanted to repair and heal. And the idea that you conduct investigations searching yeah. for uh, and whatever the evidence may be is just not the American way of justice. No, it is now, though. I mean, they, they are out for blood. They are so angry. They are so angry. We Anybody that voted for them, the 74 million people that voted for them again in 2020, they, they, or 20, yeah, 2020, they loathe. Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus. Sir, always good to have you on the show. We do appreciate it. Thank you. All right. The uh, liberals continue their hilarious obsession with January 6th. Morning Joe host Joe Scarborough, always good for a dumb comment. Scarborough went off on Republican opposition to forming a January 6th commission to investigate the riot at the U.S. Capitol, even accusing members of the GOP of lying about wanting transparency over the riot because of their loyalty to President Trump. Then he made the mistake of delving into the rioters' intentions that day and really made a fool out of himself. Take a listen. They don't, Casey, want transparency. They don't want truth. And certainly they are following the, the ringleader of the conspiracy to commit sedition against the United States government and stop the counting of the, the votes that day. And that, of course, Donald J. Trump. They were there looking to find people, hurt people, uh, kill cops, uh, almost killed quite a few. 
I guess the producers of Morning Joe never gave Scarborough the update on the death of Brian Sicknick. Going to be funny to watch these clowns desperately try to talk about January 6th every single day until the midterms while ignoring the disaster that is the Joe Biden White House.